Hey, welcome back to another exciting adventure of Mr. Warnell Does Your Homework. All right, so we're going to take a look at uh, functions defined by integrals. In other words, our second fundamental theorem of calculus. So we're going to take a look at a few more examples. This is some questions that came from the AP test. Now, the AP always says they're going to give you a question like this, and they're going to give you about 15 minutes for it. It shouldn't take you that long for these. So let's see here. Looking at question number one, they give us the function g is defined on the interval from 0 to 6 by this integral. So g of x is defined by this. Now we might remember that this all this is saying is that we are defining g of x as an area. So the next, so what we're asked here is for what values of x between 0 and 6 does g have a relative maximum? So we know the phrase relative maximum. That's our first derivative test. We like to call them sign charts. Okay, don't forget to do your sign charts on this. So as we take a look down here, so for number one, for part A, we're looking for where G has a relative max. So we're going to have to take the derivative. So G prime of X is going to equal, and the rule is we have to take the derivative of this function right here. So we're taking the derivative of an integral from zero to X, F of T, dt, and again this is our second fundamental theorem of calculus right there. So when we take the derivative, our rule says this is just going to become f of x times the derivative of x, which is just 1. Since we're looking for relative maximums or minimums, we're going to look for our critical numbers, and this is where the derivative is equal to 0 or d and e. So let's look up here. This is the graph of my derivative. This is the graph of f. But remember, this is really g, so therefore this is the graph of f, this is really saying this is g prime of x. So here g prime is greater than 0, here g prime is less than 0, and in the center g prime is equal to 0. So my critical numbers are going to be on the x-axis. And they're going to be, what do we got? 0, 2, 4, and 6. 0, 2, 4, and 6. When we do our sign chart, 0 to 6, there is g prime and there is of course g. We got 2 and 4 for our critical numbers in the middle. And we're looking at these, uh, remember we're looking at f of x, so we're going to look at the values of f. And between 0 and 2 the values are positive, so that's telling us g is increasing. Between 2 and 4 the values of f are negative, so that tells us g is decreasing and between 4 and 6 again positive, so g is increasing. So we want to find out where we have a relative maximum. Well, that's easy. That's where the g prime goes from positive to negative. So we can say there is a relative max at x equals 2, and that is because g prime of x goes from positive to negative. And there's our answer. All right. For part B, now it asks, for what values of x is the graph of G concave down? So concavity, this is our, we need G double prime, we need our second derivative. Well, we know the first derivative is F, so the second derivative will become F prime of x. And we're looking for those possible points of inflection, or PPOIs. And that is where the second derivative, G double prime, is equal to zero, or D and E. But remember, this time we are looking at the slopes of F. And that's not too hard to get. Where is the slope of F undefined or zero? And that's going to be here at the top. So we got X equals 1, 3, and 5. And we're again going to do our sign chart. G double prime of X and G of X. My endpoints are 0 and 6. And we got 1, 3, and 5. But remember, we're looking at the slopes of f. We want the slopes this time. So between 0 and 1, positive slope. So that is telling us between 0 and 1, g is concave up. Between 1 and 3 is a negative slope, telling us g is concave down. 3 and 5 is positive slope, concave up. And between 5 and 6 is negative slope, so g is concave down. And a point of inflection occurs where are those concavities change direction. So we have POIs at x equals 1, 3, 
and 5. And that is because, remember we're talking about g, g double prime of x changes signs. And there's your answer. Again, you can slow this down if you like. All right, now for part C, oh, look, my favorite one, tangent line. We love tangent lines. Okay, so let's see here. So for part C, I'm going to put this off to the side here. Maybe we can do it like this. For part C, it says write the equation of a tangent line at 4G at the point x equals 3. So we got the point x equals 3. So we are going to need 1, a point. So we need g of 3. And that's easy to get. To get g of 3, my rule says I have to look at the area. From 0 to 3, f of t, dt. So I'm looking at the area. So g of 3 is the area from 0 to 3. So let's see here. Triangle minus triangle. So it's going to be the top triangle is 1 half. The base is 2. The height is 1. Minus, because we're below, 1 half. The base is 1. It's all about that base. And then the height here is 1 also. It says negative, but I pulled my negative out front. Because it's, ne because it's below the x-axis, we say that area is negative. So we're going to subtract. So we're going to get 1 minus a half, which is 1 half. So we know g of 3 is 1 half. Well, what else do we need? Oh yeah, we need the slope. So we need g prime of 3. Well, my rule, we can go up here to part A. To get g prime of 3, we're going to look at the value at 3. We want the value at 3. So if I go back to my graph, at 3, the value is negative 1. So I got my, so there's my slope. And now we can write our tangent line. y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So we would get y minus 1 half equals my slope, negative 1, x minus 3. And there's our tangent line. Not too hard to do on these. All right, the last one, part D. It says, to sketch the function of g, list the coordinates of all critical points and inflection points. So this one takes a little bit of time, so we have to, so we have to graph the function, and the first thing we need are points. So let's see here. To get the points, what we're going to do is we're going to find every time where it crosses the x-axis. That's the easiest way to find definite solid point. So I can find g of 0. So g of 0, well that's easy. That's just going to be the area from 0 to 0, f of t dt, so that's 0. So we got the point 0, 0. Um, I'm going to find g of 2. That's just my triangle, the area from 0 to 2, f of t dt. So that's just 1 half, the base is 2, the height is 1, so that's just 1. So we get 2, 1. Next, g of 4, let's find g of 4. Hmm. This one shouldn't be too hard to do because you can almost use symmetry. What's true about these two triangles? They cancel each other out. So this one says I'm going up, so between 0 and 2, we're going up one unit. Then between 2 and 4, we're going back down one unit. So that's going to put me back down at 0. So we would get the point for 0. And I can even get g of 6 as well. So Using the same idea, I can get g of 6 as the area from 0 to 6, f of t, dt. So again, I'm starting at 0, go to 1, back to 0. I'm going up one full unit again, so that's going to put me at 1 again. So we get the point 6, 1. All right, so next we need our maximums and minimums, max and mins. We get that from our first derivative test. So if we go over here, we already did that. Oh, uh, look, way up here. So we have a maximum at 2 and a minimum at 4. So we know x equals 2 is a max, and x equals 4 is a minimum. And now the only thing we know is our concavity, right, our points of inflection. POIs, we already got those. Those were 1, 3, and 5. We got that from up here. And this, can, and this tells me where concavity changes, 
So if I just go on the domain from 0 to 1, we know from 0 to 1 the function's concave up. We know g is concave up. So now I can kind of graph this if I wanted to. And let's go ahead and do that. Between 0 and 6, so my 0 and 6, graph your points first. 0, 0, nothing drawn, this, nothing, to, nothing to scale. 2, up 1. 4, I'm at 0. And at 6, I'm up 1. And again, definitely not drawn to scale, right? Okay, max is a 2. This is a minimum. And now I just do my POIs at 1. Remember, I'm just going to draw my little dashed lines. At 1 is a POI. At 3 is a POI. And at 5 is a POI. And I know we're concave up here. Be careful. Concave up. Don't go down because that's going to create a minimum that we don't want. Concave up. Concave down. Concave up. And concave down. And there's our graph. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Come back to part two. We'll do a few more problems with you. Bye-bye.